First, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Well, everyone, this is Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. We always appreciate you joining us. We are live streaming here from the Fox 12 Oregon Newsroom. And for those who are watching on the app, thanks for being here right after the new news. We're here every weekday at 1 o'clock, and we cover a wide range of topics here on the show, which we'll be doing throughout the afternoon, including breaking news, should that occur. But right now, we are talking about the South Jetty Project out on the Columbia River. Now, this is something that's been years in the works. Um, it costs a lot of money to do this, and it's very important for that section of the Columbia River there, one of the most dangerous crossings that really you can find in waterways in the world. And uh, it's important to have that there for just the safety, but also for economic reasons. We're going to get into all of that and talk about this project and the importance and why it matters so much to everybody uh, right now, because we are joined by Matt Craig, who is one of the project managers at the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and in particular, uh, this project. So this is uh, uh, great to talk about this, you know, get more in detail. I think probably a lot of people may have seen some of the coverage of the ribbon cutting ceremony that took place last Friday, but we wanted to get a little bit more detail on it and to, to really dig into it and understand it. And Matt, thank you for being able to join us. And I think, you know, to start off, just to, to get that understanding, could you tell us just about maybe your role there and what this project really was all about here and, and why it got started to begin with? Sure. So my name is Matt Craig. I'm the project manager. Uh, I work with, for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in the Portland District. So I'm managing this uh, rehabilitation project for the MCR South Jetty. <clears throat> and um, I guess I could start, maybe if it's appropriate, I can start maybe with the history uh, of the jetties uh, without trying to go too far back, but uh, they do have a long history. And so um, <clears throat> way back in 1895, we finished the construction of this MCR South Jetty. Um, it's one of three jetties that uh, form the MCR jetty system. Um, <clears throat> so if we go back even prior to this first jetty being built, um, the mount, what you would have seen if you had, say, a, a satellite image way back then of uh, what the mouth of the Columbia River looked like, it was much wider. Um, we, you know, without the jetty structures, uh, the just the natural landforms looked a lot different. The jetties actually resulted in some of the beach uh, formation that you see now, say, for example, on the south side, like where Fort Stevens is. That's all on land that was formed after the jetties was built. But again, prior to the jetties, um, the mouth was extremely wide, and that also meant that the depth of the river uh, at the mouth was much shallower. And so what happened under those conditions prior to the jetties is basically the, the channels that any sort of uh, ships would take um, going from the ocean into the, to the river, the channels would vary widely widely and change in their location and it was just natural conditions so you have sediment moving up and down you know north and south uh, along the coastline uh, at this location <clears throat> um, we also have the river mouth which also uh, introduces forces and dynamics with the sediment there too so basically nature would just move the sediment um, according to the tide fluctuating and to whatever the river was doing. And so what happened is those passages that ships would take would, you know, would change with time. So the sediment would form and build up shoals, uh, which would be places where ships could run into. Um, so that, you know, that, that speaks to the safety aspect. And so what the, what the jetties did was help uh, control some of that action. And so, um, one of the main things the jetty does is it constricts the, the natural channel of the river, and it actually makes it narrower. And so one of the uh, analogies that I've heard that I like is that if you imagine the mouth of the river, say, before the jetties as a as like a faucet at home with a, with your garden hose, so you turn that garden hose on, you have a flow of water coming out of the hose. So that would represent what the mouth was like. Uh, prior to the jetties, because of this constricting action that the jetties uh, create, um, with the jetties, it's basically you take your hose and you know what happens when you push your finger over the edge and you constrict that flow, you get more of a spray, right? So that's this, a similar effect that the jetties provide is they constrict the, the flow of water 
to be through a narrower area. The, the jetties restrict the mouth of the river to be a, a narrower area. And so the, what happens is the flow actually, you know, which again is in and out of the river in, from the ocean, depending on tides and things like that. But the flow velocity uh, of that water is faster. And so what that tends to do is move sediment better. And so we end up with a deeper river channel, which is, uh, you know, more amenable to ship traffic, and it's also more controlled. So there's still sediment moving up and down the coast, but it's further out in the deeper water, and so it impacts navigation conditions less. Um, so that's, um, and I know that's going back quite a ways, but essentially in a, in a, in a, an analogy, that's essentially what those jetties are doing and how they support navigation. And so um, the the purpose of this current project is, you know, just over time, um, the jetties uh, are damaged from storm events. Um, and so essentially the way the jetty structure works, if you're, you know, to the untrained eye, it looks like just a pile of rocks that maybe were just sort of dumped there haphazardly, which isn't true. Uh, there's very large stones. The largest ones on this jetty are up to 40 tons each, um, which to put that in perspective, I've got a couple of fun facts. About five and a half of those stones, those biggest stones would weigh about the same as the Statue of Liberty. Uh, another stat Whoa. we have is those <laughs> biggest stones are like 80% of an M1 Abrams tank. So those are those are some examples to give you some context, but those stones are carefully placed to interlock with each other. And so that's what provides the strength of the jetty to withstand the, the forces from the waves. So those, those stones, uh, when you know, are designed to be placed and interlocked with each other um, so that when wave action hits the stones, they don't move. Now with time, um, you know, the, the wave action is, is, is very severe on this jetty. It sticks out over three miles out into the ocean. And so especially at the end out in the ocean at the head of the jetty, those wave forces are very strong. And with time, they will gradually move those stones to where they're not interlocking. Um, and then when they become loose, they're more prone to being moved by that wave action. So as time goes on, what you'd see is the jetty cross section gradually settles and then sort of spreads laterally um, and is more susceptible to that wave damage. So um, we do inspections frequently of the jetties. And so um, this project was authorized through what's called a major rehabilitation report that was completed in 2012. And that includes a economic analysis and really provides the justification for the project. And so <clears throat> through that, we were able to get the funding ultimately to do the repairs. And um, it's all about just maintaining that function uh, that the jetties provide, which is you know constricting the channel, um, uh, preventing sediments from building in, building up in the mouth and affecting navigation. So that's kind of wow. my long answer. <laughs> to no, that's, I mean, that's a really informative answer. I mean, honestly, I didn't realize <laughs> all of that either, just the, that, that that's the purpose. I was thinking it was keeping things from getting out, but it's to jet through, which jetty, yeah. I don't know if that, I don't know if that ties into the name or not, but, um, but to, to get that sediment, you know, powering through there to clear that out. And so, so with the completion of this project, what does this do for the shipping that comes into the Northwest through that port right there? Yeah, well, it, it is a, a large benefit to the region. I, I think it's over $24 billion in trade that's done in the Columbia River. So that the jetties are basically providing that uh, assurance mm -hmm. that the channel will stay open, that the depths, you know, those minimum depths are preserved. And how if, much, do, you know, oh, go ahead. And, and I'm sorry, I was just going to say, if, you know, if, if we get areas along the jetty that are weakened, as I said, through that wave action, and those aren't repaired, um, then, you know, that function is just going to degrade. And so uh, wave action can, can sort of punch through there, result in the jetty uh, deteriorating quicker. And so we're just trying to prevent that damage from occurring through these With repairs. With this being three miles out there from that mouth of the Columbia, I mean, that's so far out. What do you have to do to just maintain that and follow along, you know, with the jetty to make sure that it's not deteriorating from those, from those waves? 
Yeah, we do routine inspection. So we, we go out and, and look at the jetties uh, frequently just to make sure that that cross section, you know, is meeting the minimum requirements. So when we design these repairs, it, we require a certain elevation of the top of that jetty and then a certain crest width. Um, and that's designed to handle the, the wave action that we see. And with continuous maintenance and monitoring, I'm sure of the jetty itself, or both you know both sides of that. How long do you expect this South Jetty to last before you would have to do another repair project like the one that was just completed? Yeah, we use the term like usable life. So what kind of usable life are we getting by doing these repairs? And that's 50 years is. Um, is that is the answer to that? It's possible that as we do the inspections, um, we may need to be out there doing repairs sooner than that. But um, you know, essentially, the the jetties are designed for certain events, and they could experience some damage with those events. And that's another unique aspect of this project is, in terms of the structure being that long and exposed to the ocean, um, it's 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 kind of the most extreme conditions in the United States as far as a, a coastal jetty. There's other jetties that might be longer, but they, you know, they're a little more harbored and protected than this one. How deep is it at the very end point there, three miles out? You know, I could look at something. I might have a... Sorry, I just sprung that one on you. I'm just that, curious. Because... No, that's okay. no, that's okay. That's a very reasonable question. I think in terms of the depth uh, of stone, um, that's the way I guess I can articulate it. We have about 40 feet. Uh, if you imagine the, the jetty, it's basically near the base where it's touching its foundation up to the tops about 40 feet. Wow, so 40 feet of stone mm -hmm. right there. And I think you mentioned at the beginning, but can you, do you have the, and I'm, I'm throwing these questions at you and I did not ask you this beforehand. So I, I understand no, if okay. you don't have the info, no problem. but I'm um, like, how, can you reiterate just how many stones were involved in this? And I don't know if there's any way to know exactly what the weight of that was. Yes. So there's, there is, uh, we actually have a stone count, which I'm, I'm sorry, I'm about to check my notes. I think I want to get the right number. We have it to the stone. I think it's, it's it's like forty two thousand seven hundred uh, wow. so individual stones that were placed, and the let's see we have that in tonnage. It's forty. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm blinking. It's no, I appreciate it. I mean, this is such a massive. Problem. No, it's oh, okay. Yes, sorry, I think it's four hundred sixty-two thousand tons of stone. And, and as I'm saying that, I'm just going to double check it because I think I have that number That's... handy. That's yeah, still 462,000 tons of stone. I mean, that just shows what a massive project and undertaking this was. Um, yeah. You mentioned, you know, for the stability of it and that you'll be maintaining it. Is this something that, say, in the event of, you know, the big one, the big earthquake that we all know is going to hit at some point, would that have, would that damage that jetty potentially? Or is that something that could withstand something like that? So I, I guess I'm, I'm not a subject matter expert on that. I think that um, you know the the design conditions are for the wave action. I think that's the most critical uh, uh, design factor for it. Um, I, I I'm just not knowledgeable on on if a seismic event um, would would be more severe than that or not. Gotcha. Nope. Fair enough. Well. With this project being completed, you know, what do you think is the most important thing for the general public to know about all of this work that you put into this and what this jetty can do here for the region? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, there's a partnership that we have with, uh, you know, the uh, congressional members and uh, trade associations like uh, Pacific Northwest uh, Waterways Association that we've been partnership with and, and the ports in the area. Um, so I think there's, there's, uh, at least at that level, really broad awareness of how critical these, this jetty system is. It's a system of three jetties. Um, and, you know, especially when you look at comparisons of the conditions prior to the jetties, uh, which we have some interesting graphics uh, related to that, but what it looks like with and without the jetties. I mean, basically, the navigation and all that business, the $24 billion in trade is impossible, really, without these jetty systems. I don't think that's overstating uh, things. So. And is there, I'm sure there was a study done on this of any kind of effect that might happen like salmon runs or marine life? 
Uh, when we do the, yeah, as far as the impact of the project, we do an environmental assessment. Um, one of the things we looked at is the effects on marine mammals. And so the, the work is uh, specifically uh, required um, to avoid those impacts. And so, um, you know, one of the ways uh, one of the effects we look at is for delivering the stone, the contractor essentially um, creates a, a platform to receive the stone and we have to drive, they have to drive piles to sort of moor that in place. And so we make sure that there aren't any mammals within a certain distance of that so they're not being impacted, um, even to be able to really hear the effects of that. Um, we also um, have some wetlands in the area, and so there was some mitigation actions that we took with this project to mitigate those uh, temporary impacts, um, as well as looking at other, uh, you know, there's a, a plover habitat, or sorry, species of plover, so bird, seabirds that um, we were monitoring throughout their nesting season to make sure we're not impacting nesting sites, and um, those are some of the actions we took. Wow, incredible. I mean, just what a massive, again, project this is and what a huge undertaking and how important that is. It's, it's really, I'm glad that you've, you filled in a lot of information here, I think, for, for myself <laughs> anyway, good. hopefully for everybody else's as well, just on understanding the immensity of this. And now that this one is completed, is there another, another massive project that's underway? Um, so we are uh, looking at uh, going back to the on the north side, um, as I mentioned, the jetty system has three jetties. There's this this south jetty that we're talking about. There's also the north jetty, which is on the north side of the Columbia River, and then what we call Jetty A, which is connected to Cape Disappointment. So, <clears throat> recent inspections showed some damage at the north jetty, and so we're currently designing some repairs there, um, and we hope to to get funding um, to do some construction repairs there soon. All right, well, Matt, thank you so much for joining us. You know, really appreciate your time and talking about this and all this work that went into it. And again, for everybody watching, you know, just how important that is for the, for the economy, for so many different reasons um, to have that uh, out there. And yeah, thanks for joining us here on Fox 12 Now. I really appreciate your time and explanations. Yeah, no, I appreciate the interest. Thank you. You bet. And for everybody watching too, we are live here, live streaming from the Fox 12 Oregon newsroom. We're going to take a break, but we'll be back shortly. Uh, lots of things to talk about here this afternoon. I will say this, 1.30 p.m. I'm going to be talking about um, the music event coming up at 2 p.m. We're going to be talking about uh, to the Pacific Seismic Network about some earthquakes that have been occurring off the Oregon coast. So that's part of the reason I was talking about those. These aren't major ones. There's nothing to worry about. There's no, as of right now, imminent danger or tsunami or anything like that. But we will be discussing some of these recent earthquakes and what that means at 2 o'clock. Like I said, more in between then. And if there's breaking news, we'll have that as well. We'll take a break for right now. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 now.